All right, listen up. I'm gonna teach you Lua in under five minutes and how to code in Roblox Studio from zero. So Lua is a programming language in Roblox Studio and you can do a bunch of things with it like coding by yourself for commissions, aka earning money with some small tasks that you do for other people. You can also, number two, code your own games. You're coding to make your own games or you can also use it for automation and mods or scripts or for something else. It's also used as a powerful tool to leverage and make money because top scripters get paid the most out of any other skill. Now, as to why you should listen to me on Book Studios, I got over one 1 billion visits contributed on the Roblox platform. I'm also 20 years old and I got a bunch of contributions on the platform. And I've also been scripting since I was 12 years old. We need to make the code do something. And here's how we do that in Lua. We do them through print statements or just statements. So basically, I'm going to create a new script inside of Service Script Service. And as you can see, it already prints us with the default one. But we're going to add our own right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say print ID something. And if we go ahead and let's just remove this and we go ahead into the game, as you can see in the output on the left side, it's going to say I did something. Now, Lua is like a notepad. If I write a list, each action is done one after another. So first we make the coffee, then we add the creamer, and then we drink the coffee. So basically I added three examples right here. I did something, I did something two, and I did something three. And we're gonna just run this code into Lua to show you guys how this executes step-by-step step, one after another. So as you can see, I did something, I did something two, and I did something three, all are executed one after another, which means Lua is a task schedule based programming language. Now, we have variables. So I got a variable here called NPC name, which is Bob. And then we're gonna print the NPC is called Bob, which are basically just used to store stuff. So you can basically put any name right there. And inside of the print statement, it's gonna reference that variable. So as you can see, when we go ahead and press play, it's gonna actually print Bob, which is what we wanted. Now, as you can see, they can be also text or we can do numbers or we can also do true or false statements. So if something is true or false. And then as you can see here, we got an if statement. So if is alive equals to true, then we can print that Bob is alive. If not, it's dead. So basically we can change this to true or false. As you can see, it is interchangeable inside of the variable. And if we go ahead and run this if statement, it's gonna basically say if Bob is alive or if he's dead. So if we go ahead and run this right now, as you can see right here, we say Bob is alive. Or if we put is alive to false and we go again, it'll say Bob is dead because that value is false. Basically they're used to check if something is something. And if you don't get it, just slap your head into the monitor. Now we can also do something with Bob cash right here. So I made Bob's cash 500. If Bob's cash is more than 600, it's gonna print Bob has money if not bob is broke so as you can see because it's under it's going to print bob is broke if we go back right here and change this to 700 because it's more than 600 we go in bob now has money so it basically checks if some statement is valid so if it's valid then it's going to do something when it's valid if not then it's going to do something else because it's not now we have a loop so this is made so we don't write the same code all the time for no reason as you can see here, this is a for I loop. How many times it is executed is the number, which is 10. And then we put it at 10 for testing. And as you can see, this is the I is the number of times it is done. So basically I is used as an increment to the current count. If we go ahead and run the game right now, you guys will see that it's gonna print this all one by one. As you can see, each one is sent one after another and it has the count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Passed out weight can be also used to make this slower. So if you go ahead and run it right now, each second, this will be printed into the console. As you can see, we got one, two, three, four, five functions. So you wanna repeat your code in passion? Yes, okay, cool. Functions are like workers. Basically, I created a function right here, which is called print numbers. And we have a number right here, which is basically the variable that you pass it through. And then we're just gonna print the number. And you can see we put something in these parentheses. So I, uh, for example, one one, two, or three, and then that gets printed into there because we're basically passing it through this statement right here. So we can change this to 55 for testing. As you can see, it's gonna say one, 55, and three. So basically that shows us that this function works. Now we can also do a function with multiple variables. As you can see, I put name and text and then I mesh them together. So say something, Vuk is the best developer and we can use two of them to just basically print the whole thing and it will run the function like that. Tables, yes, we can store stuff in these tables as numbers, true or falses, or text basic. For I loops, we can check through these tables and grab values with these for I loops. So this is a table. And right here, I made an example table, which says, hello, I'm Vuk five and false, which are all the types that you can store in the tables. And then what we can do is we can make a for I loop, as you can see for I V in example table, this V is basically each one of these, as you can see. So this text, this number and this false statement, which basically gets printed. If we uh, go ahead and run this right now, as you can see, what's going to print is going to print the first one, the second one, which is number five. And then the third one, which is going to say false basically. All right now I'm going to show you everything we have set together in this sort of video. As you can see, we have example table, which says, hello, I'm book. 
and then we have the example table two. Each one are different. And then we have the is true statement, which can be true or false. We have a function called prompt book, which basically if it's true, it's going to print us the table one. So as you can see, this number one right here is this first one. So this is the text. And then we have the example table two, which is basically this second number, which is 20. So that first one is one. The second one is two. It's pretty simple to understand. And then it's the same one if it's false, just in the example table two. So I'm not book and I'm not 20. So if I go ahead and run this right now, and I'm going to show you guys. So because this is set to true, uh, it's going to be right there. If it's set to false, it's going to be another one. I'm not booking. I'm not 20. Okay, so now we have a four I loop right here integrated. So these are the loops and it's going to basically do task that wait one. And I also basically set is true is not is true. So basically it's going to say true or false and it's going to switch it each time. So it's going to basically set if it's false, it's going to set it to true. If it's true, it's going to set it to false. If we go ahead and run this, as you can see, each and every second, it changes from I'm booking on 20 and I'm not booking on 20, basically because we're changing the is true variable from true to false each and every single time. Now you can also make this infinite by adding a while true do. And if we go ahead and run this, as you can see, it's going to basically go to infinity so congrats implement and start practicing in studio sit in code for a while and also look deeper into the material and knowledge because more knowledge equals to more skill also check out the academy all my resources are linked there it's going to be the first link in the description right here if we go into the academy as you can see it's basically a boot camp and an academy for all people wanting to learn scripting animating vfx modeling basically anything you want inside of roblox studio and it does also teach you how to make money and how to do commissions it's a bunch of uh, cool guys right there it's a pretty cool community there's been a bunch of good student results so if you are interested to boost up your learning and just basically learn something a lot faster and learn everything more in depth then make sure to check that out because i have a link in the description right there and you guys can also use the code how to game video for 20 percent off and without further ado thank you both so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace